Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Ion Oshkosh. I'm your host Cheryl Hans. And uh, on this edition, we're going to be talking about substance use and substance abuse. And I guess I'll just start out by saying that substance abuse and substance use is not just an individual problem, it's a community-wide problem. And it's interesting to note that substance use at an early age is a very important uh, predictor of development of a substance use disorder later in life. Uh, currently, some 31% of youth in Winnebago County report trying to uh, uh, trying alcohol by the age of 14, and 16% report trying marijuana by the same age, 14. So, my guests on this show, so we can talk about this important issue, are to my right is um, a familiar face to I think everyone in Oshkosh, uh, Sue Ponick. Uh, thank you very much for being here. And to her right is Captain Chris Tarman. He is a captain with the UW Oshkosh Police Department. And um, they are both here representing the organization known as Breakwater. And we're going to find out what Breakwater is. We're going to get into specifics about, um, you know, use of substances, abuse of substances, and that kind of thing. So thanks very much for being here. We oh, appreciate well. it so much. Yeah, thanks for having us. So, Chris, you're the chair of the communications team for uh, Breakwater. And, Sue, you're on the steering committee and, or steering team and the communications team. Correct. Okay. All right. And we were supposed to have a few other folks here tonight, but um, they've had some personal things come up and some scheduling issues. So uh, we regret that they're not here, but um, we got two great people who are going to carry the ball for us. So let's first talk about Breakwater. You know, what is it? Um, how did it get started? Yeah, I think so. Actually, Sue and I have kind of been on the journey of Breakwater's transitions over the last probably six or eight years. Um, it's It started as the Heroin Task Force, right. or did it start oh, even before okay. that? Okay. Um, I came on when it was still the Heroin Task Force. Yeah, so we both started when it was Heroin Task Force. We worked as a team to try to figure out, is heroin where we want to be? Um, is it just heroin? Do we need to kind of think about how other drugs are important and we need to be talking about those also? And so a team of us got together and started thinking maybe we should change the name. We changed the name a little bit of our direction and it became Winnebago County Drug and Alcohol Coalition, which was a mouthful. And also it kind of after a few, it, we were there for a while, three mm -hmm. or four years oh, maybe, yeah. maybe a little longer, but people thought we were the county organization. That we were a part of the, I mean, that we were under the county's auspices and we weren't, we're, we were our own. Um, As the heroin task force. As Winnebago okay. County Drug and Alcohol Coalition. Okay, I see. So yeah. we kind of transitioned into Winnebago County Drug and Alcohol Coalition. When we were the heroin task force, people could understand that that's all we did. Right. And then right. we became the Drug and Alcohol Coalition. And then because we had the name Winnebago County on it, people thought we were a part of the department. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, I want to say it's probably about a year or so, a year and a half ago, uh, our team really started thinking about let's adjust that because it's, we're not part of Winnebago County. We definitely work very closely with Winnebago County and a few of our members are part of Winnebago County Health mm -hmm. Department, but uh, we really wanted to become something that the communi community could understand was there to help facilitate discussions around reducing youth and adult substance use. And uh, so that's why we, we kind of worked with an organization that helped us find out who we were. Uh, we came up with a new brand and we became Breakwater. And um, I think it's been a great transition because it kind of lends to what we want to do, you know? It's sure. So when did you actually become Breakwater then? It's probably been about a year. About a year. Yeah. Okay, so sometime in, <clears throat> excuse me, sometime in 2020. Right, because we probably researched and, and um, <laughs> assessed what we wanted to be for about six months. Yeah, you know, I, I would say like the rest of the world, we're, we're, it's, it's confusing over the last two years. Yeah, it might, yeah, it might yeah. have been two years ago, but uh, 2020 is this weird realm that we it's just didn't blur. exist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. In all of our lives. <laughs> so how do you differ then from Rethink? Because that also um, targets youth primarily um, in our community. Um, how are you different from them? Well, I think Rethink um, was at, at, at late, they were focusing more on tobacco use. Yes. And um, 
tobacco use isn't part of our wheelhouse so much okay. as um, other inhalants, um, heroin, I mean the whole gamut of, of drugs. Okay. But we both ended up having, um, being funded by grants, federal okay. grants. All right. So Rethink was funded by a federal grant and I want to say that it was a five-year grant and they may have been extended for another five years. Okay. But then after that, you can't be extended again. Yeah. And so our, our coalition was funded for five years and now we're on our second five. Okay. Do you know, and, and this is not a question that we had talked about, so if you don't know the answer, that's, I certainly understand that, but when youth are smoking at an early age, um, can that lead them to trying other types of tobacco products, such as marijuana? Um, I mean, do you know, is there a transition there? or You know, I don't know if I, I could <coughs> lean on a data point that says this is gonna happen mm -hmm. this way. And I think a lot of the right. stuff we talk about is gonna be like that. It's hard to connect these things because they are interlaced at some capacity, but it's also very disconnected in some sections sure. of it. But, sure. you know, if you, if you smoke at an early age, are you potentially more at risk to do some of these other behaviors that come with that? I think so. Um, and I think some of the data would say yeah. that. You know, we use YRBS data, which is the... Youth Behavioral Risk Assessment. Yes. Yeah. And so those are questions that are asked to youth, and then we use that data to help kind of drive some of the things that we do. I don't remember reading direct connections to those things in there, but I, I guarantee you could lean in there and find that some of those things are connected. Sure. So, okay, so you guys, just for people who um, are watching this show, you guys focus on substance use and substance abuse, and Rethink is mostly tobacco only. I, that was my understanding. Okay, that's kind of my understanding yeah. too, but I, I wasn't sure. So I think that since both of us are thinking that, we're probably, we're probably right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At least we'll say we're right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and if anybody knows anything different, you can call us and let us know. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, one thing we want to talk about for sure is earlier this year, the Oshkosh Herald ran a six-part series um, called Navigating Cannabis, and it was sponsored by you guys. Uh, at Breakwater. So why did you want to sponsor, um, you know, an article, much less a series of articles, and what were you hoping to achieve as a result? Well, I think, you know, you talked about use and, and, and abuse. It's really about education, too. Mm -hmm. And um, when we were talking with parents, we were talking with kids about, you know, conversations that you're having or not having in your houses. Um, parents really didn't have a good understanding of what cannabis was. Um, they didn't have a good good information to be able to talk to their children yeah. about it. So, because Karen is also on our committee, um, we just she said, "Well, what if we did this series?" And we said, "A series would be great." And we had then somebody who could do all the research because all of us are volunteers on right. this committee. Right. I mean. Um, so nobody really had the time to put together a series. So she got one of her reporters who was willing to do this, and that person took the entire um, piece on and decided we, I think we came up with the headlines or the, the topics for each. Yeah, so she, With them, right? Yep, so we, we basically sat in a room and we kind of talked about how Wisconsin's an island right now, right? We're kind of this island that doesn't have legalized marijuana at this point. And every, every state around us has some sense of what that looks like. I think there might be one that isn't, but we're like, we're gonna be surrounded by this soon. And also just being in the middle of it where you could go somewhere and get it and then travel back in, we mm -hmm. need people to understand in our community, first of all, how should we navigate this, right? We're in the middle of this space where everybody's kind of messing with it. And then second of all, uh, what does it look like for you if you come into Wisconsin and you're using this stuff? Mm -hmm. And what do we need to be thinking about as a, as a community? <laughs> I mean, the beauty of where we're at in Wisconsin is that we aren't legalized yet, but states have legalized, and we can see the impacts of what that's done. Whether good or bad, it's still something we wanted to talk about, and really we were thinking about it's youth reduction, right? We want to, or youth information. How do we help them navigate their own decision-making along the way? And so the series was meant to exactly what Sue's saying, we want to give parents answers to questions that they could then have discussions with their children about. Sure. Or even just think about in their own household, like how, 
how are my decisions impacting my community or how do they impact me personally? Sure. So have you heard then from parents? Um, what kind of results have you heard from folks? That's tough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's the hard part about this. It's, you know, people say, how can you measure your success? Well, we can't necessarily <laughs> measure our success when a third party is doing it. And yeah. it's really difficult, when, especially when it's an article. It's like, they, uh, Karen has yeah. said that they have gotten feedback. Um, I don't remember her saying we've gotten negative feedback mm -hmm. on the stories, but that people have been grateful that we've been telling the stories. And you know, they're gonna live out there forever. Right, you know, we, yeah. Which is the good thing, because people then can call it back. Um, but I think that any time, and, and this is just me speaking, any time we give out good information that is solid, um, scientific-based information, um, we have to believe that somebody's absorbing it and it's doing some good. It's kind of like the old, um, the old adage, you know, if it makes a difference in one person's life, then yeah. it's worth it, you know. Um, but the, let me just tell you a story. Um, and we, we learn about, uh, at, sitting around the table as a group, we learn all the time. So we decided to do these fridge locks. Now we're talking alcohol here. We, we decided to do fridge locks because a lot of kids get their drugs and alcohol from either their parents or grandparents because it's not locked up, mm -hmm. right? So you're going to have to finish the story because it happened to you, right? So we're talking about getting these fridge locks and what that would mean. And Chris comes into our meeting and he says, you know what? I just moved. And you can finish the story. Yeah, and we actually talked about this on the phone a little bit. Yeah. But, um, yeah. you know, and I think a lot of what we've talked about as a breakwater communications team is lent from, like, I'm in this weird position in my life where I have a 12-year-old and then I have a nine and an eight year old, but my 12 year old right now is in this window of time where we're all gonna talk mm -hmm. about. But um, I, my wife and I sold our house, we lived in Oshkosh, uh, we had to get a rental because the, the house we bought, we were gonna renovate. So we moved into a rental, we, we had this, I, I wanna say it was a, a laundry basket and it was filled with alcohol bottles. And my wife and I don't drink a lot of liquor, but we had it, you know what I mean? It's like in the cabinet or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I set it downstairs on the floor in the basement and then the next room over was where our kids' toys and everything were to play. And we're talking about this as a coalition, and I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, like, I, I mean, my kids could walk literally right there, grab a bottle of alcohol, and even, let's say they're not trying to experiment with it, they just mess around with it. Right. And, and I, could, I could have a serious problem with them yeah. even dying because sure. they overused it, you know? Yeah. And it just hit me in the moment, like, I never thought about it, you know? And so where, where mm -hmm. Sue's drawing this to, and this is how we have every discussion, is mm -hmm. from the moment of, of kind of recognition where we're like, what about all the other parents that have these same things that never really thought about it, you know? Yeah. They yeah. weren't sitting in the meeting I was, they didn't have the moment I was in, but their liquor cabinet's there, it's open, they don't think about it, yeah. you know? So that's kind of what a lot of what we're talking about is lent from is like, just the moment you're in in life, we want to kind of draw back at that and go, what could we do to reduce the potential of some situation happening? Sure. And for me, it was doTERRA bags. And these are these bags that have a filter of some sort, some chemicals in it. So if I have um, drugs that I, I want to dispose of, I can yeah. literally fill it with water, put the drugs in there, seal it, and shake it, and this will neutralize the drug, hmm. right? So I've had a couple of surgeries, and I've had either morphine or um, 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 oxycodone. oxycodone yeah, or hydrocodone. One of the, and, I, and they always give you more than you need. And so okay. I have this sitting in my house thinking, now what do I do with this? Yeah. And then they locked City Hall, so I mean the, the, the police drug station, drops. so I couldn't get, rid, couldn't get it to a drug drop. Well, yeah. thank God we had these bags and I was able to get one and use the bag. And so we're trying to figure out a way that we can get these bags out into the community because a lot of people are probably in this situation where they don't know what to do with their drugs. And what are these bags called, Sue? I think they're called Deterra bags, yep. like de deter people okay. from... Deterra bags. Yeah. How can someone get them? Because they saw, I've not heard of them. We've got a supply of them, right? You know? I think we have some. Yeah. Uh, I think they're available when... I, I'm not even sure, to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I think you could probably buy them on an online store. So. But I think we sure. may have some, and I know that we're going to be at the Senior Expo, Time of Your Life Expo, so we'll hopefully be handing some that? out there October 5th. Senior Expo, October 5th. Where's right. that going to be? Out at uh, Sunnyvale? Convention Center, I think. Oh, okay. Convention Center. Okay. Um, well, I've never heard of it, like I said. And that sounds like a, like a good thing to use. They're just, 
I'm getting hoarse. Of course, as soon as the cameras go, I, I'm getting hoarse. Way too much talking today. But um, so I'm assuming it's a one-time yep, use only. Use. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, that's good. I'm going to, when I get home, I'm going to go online to one of my favorite shopping places and I'll see what I can find. Mm -hmm. um, so, so those are good ideas. Um, the other thing um, that you guys did was you held some community conversations back in May. And there you were able to, you know, and we're going to talk about what those involved, but there you were actually able to get some immediate feedback from people uh, because they were attending. And they could attend in person or virtually, mm -hmm. right? So talk to us a little bit about what the community conversations were and, you know, what the results were of those yeah i mean i think first these happen in that window of time where we all are like did that year actually take place so that was complicated right the, the numbers were small uh, it was virtual or not it was just difficult to have some of these conversations because mm -hmm. we were in 2020 and it was hard to get together so excuse me so this was held in may of last year yes oh uh, for some reason i thought it was may like just a few months ago she had some later or uh, when did Sam leave? Um, she had some just before she left. Okay. Well, yeah. when was this done? Well, it was that was actually part of this on here. Yeah. Was it was talking about the difficulty because of just because of COVID. Okay. So let's. So it's been over a period of months. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's not necessarily. Yeah. Maybe it was in this again. Like I, last year, this year, I can't. <laughs> yeah. Track, I get but. so confused <laughs> at times. I have to sit there and really scratch my brain and think. Now, but when it, was this? It lessened our ability to actually talk with some folks, you know oh, what yeah. I mean? But yeah. regardless of that, we got some neat feedback. And I think some of the, the points that really stood out to me are kind of, we've already been talking about them a little bit, is we learned, you know, and I think some of the focus was youth. Uh, so we learned from the youth that <coughs> there's, a, there's a range where things start to be curious, right? And it's like that 10, 11, 12 years old, students are, or, or youth are curious about drugs or they have the opportunity to experience drugs. And as a parent, you're you're not ready for that yet. You're kind of like you're 10, you're 11, you're 12. You shouldn't be thinking about that. Yeah. So you're also not thinking, I should be talking about this, right? So in the conversation, the kids, w w what we found out is that it didn't matter. Between 10 and 16 or 17, 18 years old, they all knew about the same information about the drugs and alcohol. Like they, th there wasn't a very vast difference there that hmm. the 18-year-old knew more than the 10-year-old. It was very similar. Yeah. The second thing was that the parents weren't really having conversations with their kids about it. So they were already experiencing and learning these things without any knowledge from a, from an adult teaching mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. And when they were having conversations, it was really like the, these are bad, don't do these things. It wasn't educational or how do I help you navigate these things? You know, and it's, it's an interesting time for this stuff to happen again, because as I think about my 12 year old, he actually was at one of these listening sessions and I didn't really realize it until afterwards. So we're talking and I'm like, hey, tell me about this. And he's like, you know, Dad, we've had conversations because what the way I plant the conversation is, listen, you're going to have moments in life where you're going to experience things. They're not going to be easy. You're going to have to make a decision. And when you do that, I want you to come and talk to me about it. It might be somebody presents a, a vegetable substance to you that's green and they call it marijuana or it's THC or it has some other name or something like that. And they could offer that you could smoke it or you could do some sort of ingestion with this thing. Now it's a wax where it could be something liquid that they're like, hey, do you want to vape this thing? And um, I said, I just want you to pause for a second and I want you to think, you know, I'm not really sure about that. And then I want you to come and talk to me about it. And I'm going to help you navigate that conversation. It's not that you shouldn't do it. Don't do it right now because I feel like sometimes kids are like, well, you told me not to do that. My friends are telling me I should do that. They're pretty cool. I don't know. You tell me to do other stuff. Are they just going to lean in on it and do it if they if I shut them down? Or should I open the door so they can come and talk to me? Mm -hmm. So that way we can talk about the decision instead of, hey, I did this. Now I'm in trouble. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's just trying yeah. to change it a little bit. Yeah. Wow. You're, you're enlightening me right here, Chris, because you talk about wax. Um, this is a new one on me. I, I mean, I don't know anything about what you're talking about so it's it's a drug it's marijuana or what is it that is in a wax type I mean, form there are so many forms of thc now that you you can get get a hold of um i mean a wax is basically an extract of the plant that really has high potent thc in it thc mm -hmm. oil basically uh it can come in these little cartridges it come, i mean people store it in jars uh, you can smoke it, you can ingest it like like you would through a vape pen. 
Um, you know, and what's, what's even more intriguing these days is if we talk about marijuana 20 years ago, it's not even close to marijuana today. I mean, you're right. talking hundreds right. of times more potent. So mm -hmm. if you take a little bit today, it's like, you, you, you know, you, I, I don't even understand how much you could have smoked last year to get to what you may have smoked in a little bit this year. Yeah. But, yeah. And see, I, I know I'm jumping ahead of myself here on my list, and I, I try never to do that, but since the conversation was brought up, you know, I guess that's one of the arguments for legalizing marijuana is that at least it's controlled. I mean, I'm sure there's still an element of, you know, society where kids or even adults are going to say, you know what, I'm still going to get it from, you know, the, the guy down the street mm -hmm. that I've getting it. I've been getting it from for years. But with it being legalized, then it can be taxed, it can be overseen, and we may not have as many people getting into some of this stuff where you don't know what's in whatever you're smoking, vaping, ingesting, whatever the case may be. But yet, again, there's arguments against legalization too, and, and we'll talk about those. But as you were talking, Chris, that was just one thing that I thought about, that maybe from a legalization standpoint, there's a point on that side why it should be legalized. Yeah. Um, well, you're right, because of the potency <coughs> issue that Chris was talking about, but also what it might be cut with. Yeah. And that's what people don't understand. Well, it's just marijuana. Well, you don't know that. Right. Right. You know, it can be cut with fentanyl. I don't even know all the stuff it can be cut with. Oh, yeah, you can cut it with a lot of different things. You, you know, can probably so. cut it with chalk and you never know, you know? I, I don't, yeah. You know, uh, just, to, just to take us back again to this community conversations thing, before we leave this topic, I think it was a couple of things that, uh, other things that intrigued me were just that students, they're all, they're all aware, they all understand that marijuana and drugs, they're out there. Uh, they also understand that my parents may not talk to me because they think they're going to give me an idea to use drugs when in reality I already understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I think I just didn't want to leave the conversation here yet because if I'm a parent and I'm thinking, you know, I don't know how to have this discussion with my child, it's it's just a normal conversation. You know sure. what I mean? Like I, and I'm not going to like out everything in my life at this point, but you know, I didn't even realize that my seventh grader had a girlfriend until I was looking at his phone. and And then I saw that and then I was like, I need to have this discussion. I mean, it was yesterday that he wasn't even interested in thinking yeah, about dating yeah. somebody. And he and, and so it sneaks up on us. We just have to kind of think about it and then think, how do we discuss it? And if you're not sure, that's a, I mean, that's one of the reasons why Bray Carter is here. I mean, we want you to reach out. We want to help yeah. you navigate some of these things, you know. Mm -hmm. And the Herald's been phenomenal because we just want to reach people with having, like, we want to put a thought in front of you so that it provokes something in your in yourself to kind of go, hmm. I wonder if that would be something I should consider. Should I think about that? Could I have that discussion? If you saw those little, like, for, I, I probably for the last two years, we've bought the top corner in the Herald mm -hmm. every other week right. with our little We Heart You card mm -hmm. because there's folks out there who see that. We know who needed to talk to somebody about something, you know. So that's just kind of how we're trying to connect with our people as Breakwater. Sure. And so where is it, look? Is it on the front page? Yeah. Yep. And it's above the fold? Yep. Okay. Yep. Upper left corner. Upper left corner. Okay. But, um, you know, I, and I don't know when you want to get into talking about some of the pretty quick inf information that yeah. we got from pretty those quick. conversations. Cause, yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, what was the, the turnout either online or in person for these community conversations? And then what did people actually learn from them? And I know we've got a couple of screens that... Mm -hmm you know, we'll, um, we'll bring up when it's time to bring them up. But um, Sue, I'm going to let you guys take the lead on that because I don't really know when you want them to be brought up on screen. Okay. I th okay. Yeah, we, we can tell you. Um, I don't know exactly how many people we had. I think we've had as few as five or ten, or, five, or I should say two to five at some of the conversations, but as many as maybe ten and twelve. And, and a good size for a community conversation is ten to twelve people because you get good okay. dialogue and um, people are willing to talk. But a couple of the things, and, and it was in some ways to educate the people in the conversation, but really it was for us to gather data. Okay. We needed to find out what was going on in our community so we mm -hmm. could kind of form a baseline as where do we need to go. Yeah. So I, in front of me I have um, a couple of things when, when they talked with parents. 
this was interesting. Um, I've talked about it before, but it's probably time I should bring it up again, was what one parent said. And then another one said, my fifth grader seems a bit young yet. Oh, wow. Fifth okay. grader. Fifth grader. Because at that point, they're what, uh, 10 or 11? Which is what yeah. Chris is saying. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. And she's, I don't know if she's really been exposed to it or offered it. I just had a D.A.R.E. class, and we've talked about what she learned there, though. So at least they, you know, they, the dialogue has begun. Mm -hmm. um, I think open dialogue is important. Another person said, you know, we talk about it, we find new stories, and we have our kids watch them with us and talk about it. So that's really, you know, a great informed and um, engaging parent. Um, we talk about it, but at some point it gets to be too much for us to handle, which I think a lot mm. of parents feel. Yeah. They're not quite sure how to deal with this yeah. um, on our own. So in that case, they, this family involved a counselor, and they kept that up once a week. Wow, and that's great. That's mm -hmm. great, yeah. And then they said, we've had a few conversations in the car. What have you seen or heard? What type of things? Um, I should probably do it again. Hmm. So that's what the parents were saying. And then some of the key takeaways were that some parents are having conversations, but many are not. Yeah. And when I get to the kids, you'll find out how many are not. Um, many parents are not sure what to say or how to start the conversation. And I think that's being a parent, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. There's hesitation about bringing it up too early because they think it may spark an interest yeah. or spark that curiosity. Um, and then... Uh, where parents feel that they're having open discussions, teens are walking away with don't do it or else messages. Yeah. So, you know, it's it, I can see what we're saying and what yeah. these teens are hearing may be two different things. Sure. And so when the teens walk away, they oh, that was a good conversation and probably wasn't one of the best conversations. Well, and I'm going to pause you for one second because you said something that I think is important. I mean, where do you have this conversation? Yeah. I mean, I always think kids are like stuck in their device or something, right? But when you're in the car, you're kind of like traveling somewhere and it's a it's a perfect opportunity to just start a discussion like this and it's funny that you say that and it was said there because mm -hmm. I think almost every serious conversation I've had with my seventh grader has been in the vehicle like we're driving somewhere and we just have an opportunity to talk about something and usually you're like this is awkward what do I talk about well how's mm -hmm. things going have you you know and then it's kind of like how do I get into the discussion but right. it's a perfect opportunity to talk about some of these things yeah well you know but even in a car I can see this as is happening, um, you know, so many people, they, and you see it on commercials all the time, the parents are driving and the kids are sitting in the back seat and they're on their phones. Yeah. There's no, there's no dialogue happening. Mm -hmm. It's just the parents seem to be in their little world or the parent, if it's just one in the car, and the kids are in their own little world. And so I think and again, this is tough for me because I don't have kids. I have dogs. That works for me. <laughs> but but I, I don't have to bring up all these conversations. But, you know, I, I am so proud of my brother and sister-in-law for they have three kids. And every one of them is just, they were good kids. Yeah, they had a few little issues. Well, the, the two boys did. But, you know, nothing where they were ever arrested. They were never hooked on anything. And they've just turned out to be very, all three of them, very responsible adults. And they're now 31, 28, and in another couple of months, my niece will be uh, 22, I think. So I had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> but she just today started her senior year of, of college, so at UWO. Nice. Um, but, you know, so not having kids, I I don't know how you'd bring up conversations like this, but it's challenging, I think. You almost have to say, this is a no device time now. You know, maybe at the dinner table. Yeah. I can remember as, as kids growing up, you know, w we didn't have cell phones back then. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, there were a lot of things we didn't have back then. We didn't even have a DVR, if anyone even knows how to operate one of those anymore. <laughs> but, um, you know, we had conversations at the dinner table. You know, we weren't eating in front of the TV set and that kind of thing. But, again, I don't even know how many families are sitting down and having dinner together um, not in front of the television set or together as a family. Well, and I think that's a great point. And I, you know, I'll, I'm just going to say this, you know, we're, we're talking about these things. And if you don't do that, it's okay. 
it's, there's always time to start it. You know, we, we just started probably in the last year or two. We, we don't turn the TV on. If, if it's on, then we turn it off during our meal time. Mm -hmm. And then I just started asking like th three really simple questions. And I basically, I have three kids too. And I would just say, what was your favorite thing that happened today? Let's just talk about it. And then they pull that out. And then I'm like, what was one thing that happened where you just aren't sure how to manage that? You know what I mean? Or, or it made you feel weird or out of place or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about that. It gives them an opportunity to bring it up. And honestly, if their brother or sister says something, Something and then it triggers something in somebody else, then we all talk about it as a family. Mm -hmm. And it's a great opportunity to do exactly what you're saying. You know what I mean? And it's an easy way to kind of bring some of those things up that are difficult for them to experience. Yeah. yeah. And it's also a good parenting strategy because now, in a sense, and I'm going to use the word imprinting, that, you know, they are imprinting on their children good conversation and, mm -hmm. the, and being that good role model to be able to talk to your children about these yeah. things. Absolutely. One of the, excuse me, one of the no, things that they also said was that parents were very hungry for resources, to facilitation guides, anything that sure. could help them get that conversation started. Sure. So we did learn that. Okay. And so as a result of that then, what have you guys as the Breakwater group been able to, to do as far as getting them more resources? Well, and I think that's probably a great lead into the podcast because mm -hmm. we started doing the Breakwater podcast mm -hmm. and uh, that's fantastic because we bring people in who know exactly what they should be talking about or what they're hearing from folks in their specialty area and we have these exact conversations that you can listen into and they get asked difficult questions and then the answers are brought out in this discussion on the podcast so okay. that's a great resource it's right at breakwater wisconsin or breakwaterwi.org and uh, there's a lot of really good podcasts on there there are the, um, dr smeltnik Yep. has a number of them, um, oh, or at least one of them. He's still around in the area? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh I loved <laughs> him when he was over at ThetaCare, you know, um, because, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't he the, the guy who wears uh, matching socks with his tie yeah. or something yep. like that? Yep. Okay. That I'm glad be. to know he's still around. So yep. what does he do with Breakwater? I mean, he's really a resource for us. And, okay. Yep, and, and he's on our overdose fatality review right. team. Okay. So I see him when we do those, which is great. Okay. So um, where do people, if they go to the Breakwater website, and I know we can bring that, um, that graphic up, there it is, um, you know, where do they go on your website to find the podcast? It's, it's pretty easy. If you just scroll, you'll see podcasts. You just click on it, and there's a whole menu of our mm -hmm. podcasts. Or, you know what, go anywhere you listen to podcasts and just search for the Breakwater podcast, okay. and you'll find us. Yeah, because I know a lot of people, myself included, you know, listen to podcasts mm -hmm. driving or yep. whatever. Right. So, so, so just go to wherever your app store is and download, download the Breakwater podcast. That's all they have to search for. Breakwater, the Breakwater podcast. And the other thing I'll add to that too is if you're looking for an answer to something and we don't have a podcast there, let us know because we'll connect with somebody mm -hmm. who knows the answers and we'll sit down and talk to them so that way we can get it on the website. Okay. Um, so what kinds of topics are on the podcast right now? What kinds of things can folks hear? That's mm -hmm. a great question. I would, I would have to go. You know, a lot I of what we've talked about though, uh, we lean on, we lean in on these things. You know what I mean? So. Sure. Uh, what are some signs and symptoms of things that you should be looking for? Or, um, you know, I, I would have to look on the website. There's just a lot on there. I think there's probably... Sue's doing that I'm right. doing yeah, that right She's, now. she's cheating. <laughs> um, I, can th I know there's at least a couple dozen podcasts on there. With And, and Eric Smeltnik's a great guy. He's a great resource. Uh, I think we've talked about some of the resources in there that folks can connect to if they're using substances. Uh, I know we did a, a recent podcast. Or I Actually, I think we did a podcast with Jennifer Skolaski who actually does our over she facilitates the overdose fatality review and I, I know i've mentioned that a couple times this is a team of 40 or 50 people and this was also born mm -hmm. out of the breakwater coalition that sit around a table and talk about folks who have overdosed in our community mm -hmm. and then we talk about the gaps like how can we plug the gaps to help these people so they aren't an overdose yeah. that we get them connected and get them out of that situation so they can be a contributor so okay Having any luck, sir? I, I, it won't let me get to the podcast. <laughs> okay. Well, um, you know, just, just go to the podcast um, either on your computer when you go to the Breakwater website or go oh, to wow. wherever you download podcasts from and search for oh, the Breakwater it podcast. Okay. It just and, takes a long um, time. It should come up. So 
Yeah. You got it now or no? Well, it's hard to see the titles it's on there. It's hard to see so. the titles, yeah. Um, but there's a lot of them, and there's a lot of really good ones. And if you're looking for something that's not on there, please, there's an email right in there on how to connect with us, and we would love to have we'll, – we'll get those folks in there, and we'll have a conversation about it. So. Okay. Unfortunately, on a phone it just says um, – play the SoundCloud, and it's episode 13, episode 12, so you'd have to. Um, okay. um, we've got a screen up now. I'm not sure why we brought this up right now, but um, let's. this was part of your community conversations, right? These two things that are here right now. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about these, I guess. Yeah, and I think, actually, the screen's great because here, I, w I was looking at this, and I was thinking, this is such a great quote. It says, and this was from one of the students that mm -hmm. we talked to, and, and Sue didn't have the numbers, but we talked to 48 middle schoolers, 50 high schoolers, and 10 parents at these community conversations. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the quotes from the kids. If my mom wanted to talk to me about, about this, she should have done it a long time ago. And I just think in my mind, like, wow, like, you know, how impact impactful is that as a, as a parent? Mm -hmm. Where you're mm -hmm. like, I, should, I missed it. I missed the window. Because mm -hmm. we're always waiting for that window. When do I say it? I don't want it to be awkward. How do I start the conversation? And your kids are already saying, like, it's gone. You, you missed it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they're left to what they hear in school or what they hear from their friends who are kind of telling them about these things. And they're learning on their own. They, they watch movies. They they hear songs. I mean, the songs that they're listening to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. um, so we just need to to just open the door just, sure. and, and let them feel comfortable. Like, don't, you're not going to get in trouble if you come in and sit down. Let's talk about it so that we can learn together how you're going to yeah, maneuver. Sure. Okay. Well, let's, um, you did have us put together a couple of um, graphics that we can bring up on the screen. So why don't we uh, bring up that first one, Sue, and tell us what it is that, you know, we're, we're looking at here. Okay. So, um, actually, no, that's the second one. That's a, yeah, right. We need to bring up the first one. Um, there and, we go. And these are, as I mentioned, that it was the conversations were really to help us learn as well. And so these are the lessons learned. Um, and, and two of them were that kids know more than we think, earlier than we think. And that mm -hmm. goes back to that young lady or that young boy who said, you know, if my mom wanted to talk to me about it, she should have done it a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is as parents were waiting too long. So. I mean, it's good that there's, I mean, I, I was surprised at this one because at least parents are realizing that they're waiting too long and they need to do right. something right. sooner, okay? Yeah, for sure. Um, and then a couple of things that, you know, uh, little bullet points underneath that was most kids have access to computer smartphones and other internet connected devices around the age of 10. Okay. So if you don't think that they're learning about this stuff, they're Googling, they're searching, they're, they're, they're finding out. Yeah. And they're probably um, a little bit more, um, aggressively finding out then parents are finding ways to talk to their kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I was just kind of reading this too, because I mean, it says right in here, verbal references and images of marijuana are becoming commonplace on TV shows. And it says kids have questions they want to ask, but they're hesitant to do so for several reasons. First of all, they don't want their parents to react the wrong way, right? Okay. They don't want to be judgment judged for what their thing is. And then second, there's, which actually is the second one, fear of judgment from parents, peers, or others. And then the last one, it says, it's just easier to Google it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's right there. It's at your fingertips in a second. So they, they're just going to go look. Yeah. And, and, but then you don't know what the accuracy of that information is. Right. You know, um, and so that's part of the problem there. I mean, my guess is they're not Googling WebMD to find no, this information. No, probably not. Out, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the other piece of it, too, was that... Um, Oh, I just kind of lost my train of thought here. It had to do with, oh, reactions. Um, kids were saying that I don't bring it up to my parents because I don't want them to know that I'm thinking about this or I, I, don't, want, I, I don't want to try it, but I don't want them to think I want to try it. Mm -hmm. And you then the parents yeah, get defensive sense. and, oh, my God, what's oh going on? Oh, my gosh, on? you're not going to do that, are yeah. you? Yeah. That's where they start. Right. But yeah. it's really the kid just wants to know, like, I, it's out there. Help me. Help, I, I'm undecided. I don't know what to think. You know what right. I mean? My friends who are really cool, I like them, are doing this. Yeah. How do I navigate that? Yeah. yeah. And how do I maintain a friendship with this person or these individuals and yet not be made fun of because I'm not going to participate in this stuff? Yeah. Or the harder one is, is do I maintain a friendship with them? Because this isn't something I want to do, but it's something they do. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, I think that's a lesson that, um, that that's going to affect those kids through their entire lives. I mean, you know, I, 
I have friends or have had friends where, I mean, they're not doing things like that, but they're doing things that I don't morally or ethically or socially agree with, um, like breeding dogs. You know, they're not a professional breeder. They don't know the first damn thing about what they're doing, and yet they're bringing un unwanted pets into this world, adding to the overpopulation. So, you know, do I maintain a friendship with these people because we're so diametrically opposed? You know, so you're always going to be faced with these issues. Do I want to maintain a friendship with certain people when they're doing such things that I disagree with so strongly? Or does yeah. it become a teachable moment? Yes. That you can, you know, yeah. share your viewpoint and get I them tried to and think, I failed. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> In the one case. So. Well, and that's a, you know, that's a good point. I mean, the country right now is so divided. Like yeah. we're so on this. I'm on this side. I'm on this side. There's a lot of people in the middle, yeah. but they're very quiet. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. But the whole point is, is you know what, Sue, you can have a different opinion about marijuana than I do. Let's talk about it. Let's figure out like where does it help the community and us make the right decisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we can walk away and still be friends. Right. We just need to figure out like how do we help each other through yeah. that situation, you know? Yep. Yep. And and that's relevant in so many other areas of our world right it now. Is. So. It is. <laughs> now we had another um, another graphic um, that we wanted to bring up. It was the second one. Mm -hmm. And um, so if we can bring that up now. Um, yeah, this one's this was kind of those key takeaways too, and I, I think it's gonna come up here, but it's really just start talking early and get involved. And I think, you know, the start talking earlier is we all kind of wait because we- There we go. We don't know, we don't wanna start it. We don't wanna start the conversation and, and, and really we're nervous about whether or not we're gonna give ideas to people. The, the fact is, is that it's all there anyways. They have access mm -hmm. to it. So start the conversation early because before, if you think you should have it now, they already know. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So open that discussion and, and make it easy. Don't make it judgmental. That's really important. The get involved is is really meant to zero in on being curious about your child's life. You know what I mean? Like spend a little extra time. And when we were talking about this, if you're at the dinner table or in the vehicle traveling and you're stuck in a device or something like that, your children want you to be curious about what's going on in their life, right? So lean in on that and just, mm -hmm. and, and honestly, it could start with just a couple questions. How did, how did things go today? Or was yeah. there something you experienced that you wanted to chat about? Um, we, we've all been there, you know? I yeah. mean, I, I was, a young child. We were all young children. We made our own decisions. In fact, I could think back to, I grew up in Coleman, Wisconsin, and there's more cows in Coleman than people. But, um, <laughs> I, I remember the moment when somebody introduced the opportunity of a drug for me. And we had the ability to leave our campus, the, the school campus, and go to the Piggly Wiggly to get food or whatever. And somebody met me between. And he brought out this metal pipe and it had some stuff in it. And at the, at the time, I, I had no clue what that was. And I was like, eh, I, don't, I don't need to do anything with that. I didn't really understand what it was until I came to college. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh my gosh, that was marijuana. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, so our experiences are different, but it's always there. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. be curious about that. Ask your children, what's going on? How can I help you? How can I help you navigate? Not you're gonna get in trouble for this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess, you know, we've talked a little about, you know, at what age they should start. Um, what start is... Start talking. Start talking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that. that. <laughs> nice clarification. <laughs> I'm relieved you said that. Yeah, okay. Because <laughs> I had a few thoughts going through my head, and um, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so, you know, it's it's interesting to note, and you mentioned this earlier, Chris, that you know, we're pretty much surrounded by states that have legalized marijuana. And, you know, how, how do any of us, but especially you folks as, as an organization, and you folks as parents, how do you talk to kids about why they should maybe lean in the opposite direction of drugs when everybody around us is legalizing marijuana. I mean, that's a tough nut to crack, I think. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I'm, I'm of the, the person who probably six or eight months ago, I was kind of like sitting in my chair, just kind of like, whatever, let's get there. You know what I mean? Like, let's legalize this stuff. I mean, the whole world's talking about it. People are doing it. Um, and somebody actually was like, are you serious? 
aren't you a police officer? And I'm like, yes, I am. But, you know, it's difficult when I show up and somebody's frustrated with something I have to manage when the rest of the world is somewhere else. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. And then they were like, but you need to read some of this stuff, right? So they gave me some articles and I read through it and I was like, whoa, like maybe I do need to slow down and think about the impact of those decisions. And you, you actually mentioned something earlier that was, you know, if it's legal, we can tax it and then, you know, we can control it and stuff like that. But a lot of people have said, let's just tax it. Let's put a high tax on it, right? Because we'll legalize it. It'll be okay, but we'll put a high tax on it. But what that does is it actually pushes people to do what they're already doing mm -hmm. because it's cheaper then to get it on the streets. And we don't solve the problem. Mm -hmm. We actually create a different problem, right? So we have to think strategically about how we do it the right way. Mm -hmm. The other thing about it is if it becomes legal, it's probably like alcohol where you got to be a certain age to consume it or certain criteria have to be met to consume mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just like, hey, go ahead and do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's going to have some things that come with it. The, the Wisconsin operating while intoxicated law, there's already a law in there for operating with a restricted controlled substance. Mm -hmm. So it's not like if it went legal tomorrow, there's still some obligation to how you drive safer using it. You mm -hmm. know? So some of those things are in place already. But there are things that we don't necessarily consider that we can look at other states and go, how is that going to impact our state? And how can we prepare for that so that we don't cause casualty or, you know, some, some things sure. like that. So, Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned THC earlier, Chris. And I know for myself, I'm not even sure that I fully understand the difference between marijuana and THC. I know that THC is the ingredient in marijuana, um, or one of the ingredients, but I don't think I really know the real difference. And I know you're not an expert, but police officers all the time talk about the differences between the two. So what are the differences between THC and pot? Yeah, so pot, marijuana, whatever you're going to call it. I mean, it's the plant. THC is what's taken out of there. That's what gets you high. Mm -hmm. um, and then even inside of that is like your Delta 8, your Delta 9. Like there's different s things inside of there that affect you in different ways. Um, so there's this THC light, which people are calling, which is Delta 8, mm -hmm. which kind of okay. gives you some of the experiences of a... a your normal delta 9 THC or the or the stuff that gets you high or whatever that is but it's actually become legal inside or not necess it's it's an interesting gray area because it's inside of the hemp bill that was right. created legal that kind of brought that into the ability to maybe use that or whatever mm -hmm. and then and then you go to and, and oh CBD oil right. right so CBD oil is another extraction the cannabinoid oil yeah and folks are using that right it's available you can purchase that um, that's supposed to have the stuff that is illegal taken out of it right and so you can use that stuff and you get some of the benefit the benefits of it Here, here's the complication about it there's it's so new you know what I mean yeah, yeah. and researchers for so many years they, they can't even really figure out the effects of marijuana or THC or Delta-8 or Delta-9 or CBD because it's usually partnered with something else. Like, you know, like you're either you're having a drink or you're smoking and then you're using those things. And it it's just, it's complicated to try to figure out what the effects really will yeah. be. Yeah, and one other thing that you and I had talked about when we were first talking about doing this show is there are some gummies out there <laughs> Um, you know, you hear about brownies. That's the one thing that we've heard about for years. But now there's... Now um, she's in my generation. <laughs> <laughs> mine, too. <Yeah. laughs> I think we're probably about the same age. Um, Delta 8 gummies. So, okay, they're not brownies. They're gummies. But, boy, you can really chew a lot of gummies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You and know? that's part of the problem. And is Yeah. And so how do you... How, how do you control how many people are taking? Because they can overdose if they eat a whole bunch of those. I, you know. Um, and having them in your home, too. Yeah. Um, again, we kind of go back to that, are they locked up, whatever. Because, I mean, mm -hmm. people were concerned about Tide Pods and those, you know, little, yeah. you know, cleaning oh, yeah. pods. That's yeah. what they were worried about. It's like, you should lock up your gummies, too. If, yeah. you, if you've got Delta yeah. 8 gummies in your home, those should be locked up, too, because kids see gummies. It's like, oh, I can have a couple of these or well, a bag of these. And what if pets get into them? Exactly. Yeah. You know, um, so. I have some family who live in Upper Michigan. They were talking about gummies. And they were like, you know, 
one or one or one and a half gummies and I'm feeling pretty good the rest of the night. And I'm thinking, I don't know. I really like non-THC gummies. I have to make sure you all understand I'm talking about. <laughs> I, I just really like gummies, right? And I go to Flea Farm and get that gummy worm bag. And I can eat quite a few of those and they're awesome. They taste good. But you start doing that accidentally with a different mm -hmm. type of gummy and yeah, you're going to end up with some issues. You know what I mean? So what Sue's saying is so true. Lock, you know, lock that up or figure out what can I use? Yeah. Um, and obviously in Wisconsin, it's still illegal. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. And so I want to talk about that from a, um, from a legal perspective for just a minute, because someone, I mean, obviously you can't go to another, you shouldn't, it's illegal to go to another state and then bring this stuff back over Wisconsin state lines. Um, how do you police something like that? How do you know if someone's bringing it across state lines? There's there's no patrols set up to, you know, like the border between Mexico and America, right? Oh, is, Illinois and Wisconsin with the oleo. It, oleo. Oh, were, uh, margarine. Yeah. Don't you remember years ago? I don't People remember that People would confiscate that because we didn't sell margarine in the state of Wisconsin. So really? they would bring it in from Illinois. Okay, I think That's you like might be a little older than people come here and buy me. spotted cow and then <laughs> yeah. take it out of state. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. the yeah. spotted cow in Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's um, not, there's not a border. Um, it's it's just like anything else. I mean, I mean, here's the thing about marijuana. You, you can't hide it. I mean, it smells, you know what I mean? So if you smoked it or you have it, it's on you and I, you, you, you may get used to it, but everybody else can smell that you have it. Right. So, and, and I, Honestly, I'm really good at detecting that, and I think a lot of police officers are. So sure. that's a way that they could experience yeah. that. Or, you know, if you're driving on the road and your your plates are your your license plates are expired, or something else happens, and we end up, and then you you smell it, like you're, you're going to get caught with it. Just because you bought it in a legal state doesn't make it legal in Wisconsin. It's still mm -hmm. illegal. Mm -hmm. Now, is it criminal? That depends, and it depends on a few things. It depends on if you've been in trouble for something like that in the past. Right. It depends on how much you have. If you have it in conjunction with a scale and a bunch of cash, I mean, that's going to raise some red <laughs> flags because then now we're questioning whether is it for you or is it for you to sell. Mm -hmm. um, so, And that's obviously a larger penalty. Yeah. So there's a lot of layers to that. But there's a difference between legalization and decriminalizing. Yes, yeah. So right now I think it's... It, it's more decriminalized than what you would think in Wisconsin. I mean, uh, if you had a small baggie of marijuana and you're stopped by the police, you might get a ticket. Um, you know, in, in Oshkosh, there's a possession of marijuana ticket. It's like a forfeiture. Um, but you don't go to jail. They you, just, you, you won't go to jail unless, you know, unless you've unless had it in a, the past yeah. and now it's like your second or third time. Mm -hmm. um, possession of marijuana on a criminal level, if it's multiple times, can be a felony. Uh, the other thing that I think we think about at UW Oshkosh, because we've actually partnered with the DA's office to create a, what we call it a drug diversion program. Uh, and, and so we actually refer, if you're a student and we catch you with marijuana, we'll refer you to the district attorney's office they're going to offer you a program. And this is important because when you fill out your FAFSA to get educational funding, mm -hmm. if you've been convicted of a, a drug charge, they will not give you federal money to fund your school. So no student loans. So you can't mm -hmm. get student loans. So we've tried to navigate that to help make sure that we, you know, we can get them into a program and help that stuff yeah. not affect them. What about gummies? Do they have an odor also? You know, that's a great question. I'm not, I'm not sure. I would assume that you can probably make a gummy that doesn't have the THC I, odor. And I think but a oils, canine could, pro uh, a drum oh, canine yes. could yeah. probably pick it up. And I think oils are less, they have less odor than the plant material does. Yeah. So, and well, they, they make a ton of devices that you can trap the odor in there, so. Yeah, and I mean, this CBD oil, it's, it's everywhere. I mean, and it is legal to sell, but you know, someone said, well, you know, you should try it for pain and this, that, and the other. I don't know that much about it. I don't know if I want to try it for pain. Uh, you know, I've even read in animal articles that it's great for arthritic pets. Yeah. But again, I don't know. I, I mean, that would be before I'd even use something like that on one of my pets. I would ask my vet, but um, I just don't know that much about it. Yeah. So. And I don't know how much... Um, documented research has actually been done on it. I don't Yeah, you know. and how much do you use? You know, here again, it's it's all those things that how do you know mm -hmm. how much to use is too much 
a dangerous thing? You know, I mean, this is what I mean. It's just, you just don't know. Well, and what, so are, what are the long-term effects or, you know, those things? Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. in the next five years, 10 years, like more information will come out and we'll be more sure. educated about it. But um, right now it's complicated, you know? Yeah. So. Well, and the damage, especially the children, um, until the age, the brain matures. And I think if I remember my statistics right, it's, it's beyond 18. So I think it's like 22, one, 21, 22 before your brain is actually to the mature level. Yeah. Using substances can deteriorate and, and it, it affects different parts of a child's brain. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, and a lot of it has to do with their reasoning and their decision making. Sure. And so, I mean, and, and reasoning and decision making is how do you make a good decision, make a good choice? Yeah. Um, so when people say, well, it's just marijuana. Yeah, but marijuana, and same thing with alcohol, it affects your brain differently. Yeah. And it affects, affects the brain of a child and a teen and a young adult differently than it would us. Sure. So we're down to about two minutes or so. Um, and I thought we were going to run out of time. <laughs> <stuff> to say. <laughs> well, I, I knew that we wouldn't. Um, we so I just want to talk about a couple of things real quickly. Um, number one, how can people get involved? If, if they want to get involved with volunteering with Breakwater or they just want to talk to you guys about something, um, you know, what's the best way for them to do that? To go to the website and, you know, I, I know you've got a form there where you can type stuff out and then submit it. Um, is that the recommended way that people get in touch with you if they want to volunteer or find out more information about what you guys are doing? I would say right now that would be the way. Okay. Um, we're in a little bit of a transition. And so if we see it on the website, then we can follow up. And it's not only that if they want to get involved, and we'd love people to get involved, because according to our grant, we need to have people from different sectors of our community in, engaged and involved in our work. Um, but also if they want us, they want us to come and, and share with them information that they need, like parents want to learn more, or if they want us to speak at a PTA, um, mm -hmm. or if, you know, whatever it might be, just maybe a neighborhood gathering. Um, sure. That is a way that, that we can exchange information. Okay. But I was going to say another thing that, um, and maybe you can put this up sometime later, um, the Wisconsin Department of Health has this thing called the Small Talks Campaign. And um, SAMHSA, which is the Federal Mental Health Association, I don't know what SAMHSA stands for off the top of my head, um, they say talk um, and they hear you campaign. So there's a couple of things out there, and I think those resources are available on our website you can reach well, them and they're saying start at eight or nine years old yeah so wow start talking it's true when that one graphic said start talking early yeah. uh, start at eight or nine years start talking at eight or nine years old um, and and then just real quickly um, it's we've talked primarily here about um, marijuana but you talk, you guys focus on other types of substances as well right yeah, absolutely. I mean, I talked about overdose fatality review, you know, and that's been a, a large part of our focus, you know, is how do we connect people? And honestly, um, we're trying to figure out how we help people get out of their substance use. You know, I think we've moved a little bit away from substance abuse because when you're in that moment, you don't even realize it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you're stuck in there. So yeah. it, when, when you ask, like, what can you do? Get involved, like help us help us recognize it okay. so that we can help get those folks connected to resources. Okay, very good. Um, and to get involved, go to breakwaterwi.org. I want to thank both my guests, Chris and Sue, for being here tonight. Um, want to thank um, you folks at home and my crew. Uh, that's going to do it for tonight. We will see you next time. Until then, keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh.